561003. Printed face Jezebel. Chicago, the noise you see. Thank you, brother. I shall you pray while you're standing. I have been Father, we thank thee tonight for this privilege of being here again and for this great gathering, the assembling of your people together. You promised that if we would do this and pray, then you'd hear from heaven, and we know that thou will do this because it's your promise. And we pray that you'll move on us fresh tonight. Baptize us freely with the Holy Spirit. Get glory to the service, for you ask it in Christ's name. Amen. May be seated. The meetings are almost too short. They're just. I first thought when Joseph mentioned this to me, that according to my schedule, I could only stay two days. And then we set our up a little further by the courtesy of the other place that I was going. And we got it to make it uh, five days. And so I told Joseph that I was going to have a kind of make this kind of my trip to kind of stay away from Chicago a little while because I'm um, here too much. See, I'll wear my welcome out, I'm afraid. And someone said many times, said, if you want to call Brother Vernham, if he ain't home, call Chicago. If he ain't there, call Shreveport, Louisiana. He'll be on one of those places. That's Brother Joseph or Brother Moore at Shreveport. And last, this last fall, this early, this fall or late summer, of the Shreveport in a tent revival. And I told Brother Moore, I said, now, Brother Moore, there's a lot of the brethren in the, in the eastern country and different places I never visit. And they look at that. And I'm afraid it's going to offend them a little. And I said, now, I kind of let up a little around Shreveport and Chicago after I finished these meetings that I got until unless the Lord will call me to do something different. And then until I visit some of the other brethren around, I know someone was telling me, I believe Billy last night, the night before, said there are some brethren wanted to meet me in order to find out about some time to have some meetings. Well, now, I don't make any of the meetings, any of the itinerary, the itinerary is made up. At Shreveport, Louisiana, see, there's several of us in this group, and if one makes it up, and the other one makes it up, and the other one makes it up, then we have to, well, this fellow may be strong, so we have to cancel that, and oh my, that hurts. Only after they had done the promise, and the officialized word is for the more Shreveport, Louisiana, and got open dates, if you don't go overseas right away after Christmas, we got some open dates then. The plumb on until the last date that I had now is in Lima, Ohio, with the Baptist people at an auditorium beginning on the January the 10th through the 15th at Lima, Ohio. That's my last date that I know of at this time. Now I think from there, they have got some in California, that they're going to make some dates in California, up around San Francisco, and then down in San Fernando Valley with uh, the Spanish people, Phoenix, for just a few nights, then they're coming east again. Now, in the month, last of October, and the first December, after I return from Idaho, they're going to have some in, I think it's um, Virginia and Maryland, or somewhere up in that way. There's uh, some meetings in, I don't know yet, Mr. Moore never told me. You let me know after I get home from this time. And now, if you, I'd love to come to your place, each one of you, and we're making up some short fast meetings, three to five nights, just around to visit, to get to visit the brethren before making a worldwide tour, all to every major city in the world, and living on the East Coast, coming back to the West. And after the prayer, meeting is over in many parts of the country. There's something on my heart that here a few weeks ago, I was in a certain city and having a meeting, which many of you are acquainted with, and there had been a Lutheran college there, and in a former meeting, the man had told me I was polished up suit there because of the visions. And he wrote to me after I, and he said I made such a horrible way of a Bible teacher. Well, I guess that's right, but not on what he said. He said, I was surprised to hear a man that faces the people that you do and make a statement that Satan can't heal. Right? He said, we know that Satan can heal. He said, in the city I come from, he said, we have a woman there that she has a witch-like and she takes the people that comes to her for sick and she pulls her out of the head and plucks their veins and gets blood in it and walks down to the river, throws it over her back. And as she walks up the bank, if something makes her turn around and look, the disease comes back to the people. If she doesn't, the people get well. He said, Mr. Branham, I checked and at least 20 or 30 percent of those people get healed. And he said, now you're just a boy. 
with all my 47 years is said, I was preaching before you was born. And I said, well, I wrote him back. And he said, I was a Beelzebub. I said, now, the first thing, I want to forgive you for that, brother. For what if I was right? Then, what have you done, see? What if I was right, see? Then what have you done? You blasphemed the Holy Ghost, which is unpardonable. Whosoever speaks out against them works, just said, will never be forgiven in this world or in the world to come. And I said, I forgive you for that because I believe that you didn't understand. And I said, I love you because that you are interested enough in a Lord Jesus to try to correct me thinking I'm wrong. I said, I appreciate that. Anybody that tried to correct me when I'm wrong, I want to be corrected. And I said, now, as far as you saying that Satan could heal, I want to just give you a scripture. Jesus said he could not heal. So that settles it to me. Jesus said, when they told him that he was healing by Satan, he said, if Satan cast out Satan, then his kingdom is divided, you see. So I said, that settles it as far as I'm concerned. But I said, now to straighten you out about the witch, I said, certainly those people get healed. I said, there's a lot of people in the land today call themselves divine healers, and people go to them. They say, oh, I got power, I can do this. But I said, certainly, they, the people, get healed. And I said, just the same as it does by the witch, but it's not the witch that does it, neither is it the divine healer. It's the people's faith thinking they're approaching God through that witch. And God's God to recognize faith regardless of where it's at. You know that's right. So in this, oh, how the great scrap will come on. And then this dean wrote me a letter and I said, I want to interview with you. And the manager granted it. They take me out to a great Lutheran college and home there. And sitting at the table, I thought, well, I sure get it now. So I said, Brother Branham, we've been in your meetings and you're fully persuaded that it's the Holy Ghost. And I said, yes, sir. I thought, oh my. And he said, we ourselves as Lutheran, we are seeking God. He said, if it will come from your lips that there's something different besides what you've learned Christ by faith, we want to know. I said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? He said, well, I never thought of that. I said, neither did those Baptists at that time in Acts 19. They was believing, shouting, screaming, and having a great joy. But they hadn't received the Holy Ghost yet. So Paul laid his hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. He said, what must we do? I said, how many of you is hungry? He said, the whole group of us. I said, well, move back the table and go over by the wall and kneel down. They made a big row around, a great arena there, where we had a dinner. I went around and laid hands on them, and 72 received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So they're having a great time over there. Now, if God will do that in America for Lutherans, he will do it in Africa, Asia, wherever it is, for Lutherans, Baptists, Presbyterians, Catholic, or whoever hungers and thirsts for God. What a great thing. Now, tonight was kind of an evangelistic night, but we want to hurry right through if we can, and tomorrow night, if I'm just a little lingering tonight, I want to ask about the testimonies. Did they come in? Many come in. Brother Joseph, Brother Joseph possesses, I have not taken the time to ask for them. Oh, you haven't had time? How many is here tonight that was prayed for last night and feel that God touched your body? Let's see your hands. Now, those that was prayed for last night, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and about 12, that I see now, yeah? I got that one over there, that lady there. All right, sir, just about 12. Then I see, well, I think I had about nearly 60 or 70 up there. Maybe I'd better continue on them as I used to do. Because I think I get better than that in the beginning scene. And so I can't take our robust ministry. And neither can our robust take mine. The Lord has given us both something to do. And me, I must minister the way the Lord has provided. So don't follow because you're not in the line now. Because God wants to heal you out there where you're sitting. That's right. I think that's the best. I think it's the best. God's a good God. He's really good. And he'll give you your desire. Like in the Bible, how Thomas said, Oh, I want to believe it. And now, look, all the rest of the disciples said, Sure, we believe it. Yes, sir, he's risen from the dead. We believe it. Thomas said, Nope, nope, I don't believe it. I got to have more than that. I've got to have some evidence. I got to put my hands in his side and so forth. For I believe it. Yes, sir. He's a good God. He said, come here, Thomas. Now you touch me. Thomas said, oh, you are the Lord. I know you are now. I said, now you have seen and you believe. How much greater is the reward 
who's never seen any yet to believe. See, that's it. You must believe. You notice what a time Paul had with the Corinthian church. Everyone had a tongue, had a psalm, had a kind of a something they had to do before they'd believe that they had the Holy Ghost, see? And Paul had trouble with them. He never had that uh, with the Ephesians, Galatians, any of those. He never had to speak about it. Why they were people who had faith and just believed God and accepted it and everything was all right, see? So they, but God's a good God. And if you want it that way, he'll give it to you that way. But I just like to believe him, don't you? Just take him at his word. I just like to believe it that way. Now, may the Lord add his blessings now as we fellowship together and tomorrow night. After tomorrow night, I guess Joseph has made the announcement that their son, Brother Osborne and Brother Tommy Hicks and Brother Ogbevi is going to be here to continue this meeting through the week. Now, they are real good brethren. And now I know Brother Osborne real well. I know him real well. And I know he's a very fine brother. I know Tommy Hicks real well. And I know he's a fine brother. And I don't know Brother Ogilvy too well. I met him about twice. But he sure seems to be a fine brother. And I want you to continue to come to bring out your neighbors and everything to hear these brethren, they are good men of God, willing to be using the way they are. And now I've left my home time when Billy Graham was over there. And I've always wanted to meet Billy Graham. And he's in Louisville now preaching. My family and them has been attending. Our churches are closed and everything. Are cooperating in the meeting to do everything we can to put the effort. I live about where 85% of the alcoholic beverages is that swindles these drunk people on the streets comes from Louisville, Kentucky. And the tobacco factories is a seat of Satan. And you people in Chicago pray that God will anoint that evangelist Billy Graham till there'll be a revival breakout in Louisville and we'll just start something and I'll pray for him. And I pray for him all the time, each day and every night and everything because God's using the man in a great way and a very fine brother. So I am told now, over in Second Kings and the ninth chapter and the 30th verse, Andrew, just take a little scripture here, a few us to go back in the Old Testament again to read. And when Jay, who has come to Jezreel, Jezebel heard of it, and she painted her face, tied her head, and looked out at the window. And may the Lord add his blessings to the reading of his word. Now, we'll go back again in the Old Testament, because the Old Testament is always a foreshadow of the New Testament. And the Bible says that there were examples of, in Hebrew 11, that they was examples. And on over in the 12th, it says in Hebrews, seeing that we are compassed about with such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth so easily beset us, that we might run with patience the race set before us, looking to the author and finish our faith, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, if we see what God did back there to those people, upon certain attitudes that they taken towards God, and then if we find out if he'll take the same attitude that they did, we will receive the same reward that they did. You can just expect because God never changes. He's just the same. His blessings is the same and his penalties is the same. And Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. And then I'm going to see, I forgot that he brought over me over to ask Billy if he gave what prayer cast tonight. If he didn't, we'll have to get some maybe. Don't throw your card down. Bill, how many here has got prayer cards? Raise your hands real well. That's fine. There's enough then anyhow to pray for. Have a prayer line if we don't and we'll go continue right on. So I let up just a little on evangelistic side tonight in order to pray for the sick. Now Jezebel, that's a name makes everybody shiver. Just to say Jezebel. That was just a common name. Just a name like Martha, Ruth or Mary or some other name. But when they hear the name Jezebel, it was all because of one woman that took the wrong road. Now, I'd imagine Jezebel, just because she had the name of Jezebel, didn't make her what she was. It wasn't her name that did that. It was attitude. That's what made it. And the name shouldn't make a shiver like attitude that she took ought to make you shiver. But you mentioned Jezebel. Oh, my. But mention some of her sin. Oh, well, that's all right. And it wasn't it. It wasn't the name that made her. It was her sin that made her what she was. Your name don't make you who you are. It's your character that makes you. Your character molds you and makes you what you are. 
I've always said, let me go into a man's house and let him stand out on the street and testify, sing, shout, speak with tongues, dance in the spirit, anything he wants to do. Let me go into his house and look at those old pinup girls all around the world. Let me look at these magazines that he's reading here on the desk and listen at him turn the radio on to some of that African nonsense of rock and roll and boogie woogie. I can tell you right now what kind of a spirit he's got, see? What it feeds on. I don't care how much he carries on out in the street. He's what he's really feeding on. That's his diet, that's right. Let me, how much? No matter how well he claims and how good society and what he's standing and what his social status is, that doesn't make a bit of difference. Watch what his spirit feeds on, what music he listens to, what he reads, what he looks at. You can tell what he's made out of then, and his character will always tell. Now, Jezebel was perhaps just a lovely little girl at one time. She bounced around, around her mother's knee, probably with her dad. And just like the other little girl, and never did that papa and mama ever think that her name would go down in history as one of the more outstanding examples of cruelty and sin, one of the greatest among women names that's in the Bible or in history of anywhere. Lady Maccabee wouldn't compare with her, and Lady Maccabee was arrested in Oklahoma smoking a cigar for speeding, driving a carriage through the street. When Dr. Eben, at a great meeting, was asked when he told the story of her, when all the religions of the world had met there about 50 or 60 years ago, and he told this story of how horrible she was, and when they caught her and tarred and feathered her, they was, she was so filthy that they didn't even want to put their hands on her. He told the story with such a way till everyone sitting on the end of the seat listening, he was so and then when he got separate, um, he stepped back from the microphone. A little fellow he was, he said, gentlemen of the religions of the world, has a religion got anything that will clean the hands of Lady Maccabee? Everybody sat still. He jumped up in the air and clicked his little together and clapped his hands, said, the blood of Jesus Christ won't only clean her hands, but will clean her heart. That's right. That's what the religion of Christianity means. It will clean them no matter how vile they are. And so that's it. Little, little Jezebel, when she was a little girl hopping along around home, skipping, playing, jumping the rope, or whatever the little girls did, little did they ever know that she'd turn out that way. But then, what made her what she was, was a kind of teaching she got at home. And she was a pagan. And what teachings that you get at home, that's what usually you are. So, is what kind of a teaching you listen to? She was taught to hate God, Jehovah, because she, her father was Baal, and she was taught to hate God and hate God's people, and that hatred for that in her heart, it made her what she was. But oh my, another thing, no wonder Ahab, his father was a backslider to begin with, and Ahab was a borderline lukewarm believer, just an indictment to the society of Christianity will be today an indictment to the kingdom of God in that day. He was just a man who was a wishy-washy and not stable at all. But imagine he was a handsome young man with his hair slicked down, you know. What kind of a little one of these boys that's going out within this hair? What is it? You call them dragon hot rods, something on that order. You see one of these little fellows that runs around like today. And you know, it goes to show that he was that type of a person or he wouldn't have fell for that type of woman. That's right, Israel was supposed to marry Israelites. They weren't supposed to mix marriage. You know that's right, they wasn't, and you're not supposed to do it today either. Yoke unbelievers with believers. That's against the law of God, against the Bible. And so, you know, little Jezebel had learned one thing in her home, and that was to use paint. That's a hidden trait. Any paint, never in the world, but all painting of faces originated with the heathens is always condemned believers. I hope this go real far down home. Just to make you real good and sick for a few minutes. But now, don't get angry with me. I love you. But I just want to tell you what's truth. Remember, I've just returned from the African jungle. Everyone, the tribals of heathen, on every kind of occasion, they paint their face and wear great big earrings. The Indian savage heathen paints his face 
and puts on wall paint. When he goes, his wall is worship around his idols. He paints. You are ashamed, see? It's a hidden sign. Too bad it's ever got in a Christian church, wasn't it? Sure was. And that was a weak pulpit. What brought that in? And the preacher ought to be ashamed of himself. So she was used to painting. She made herself a little butterfly, and rather that's a kind that can jilt a many a good man. That's right. See them on the street with a little lip, look like a rosebud and a whole lot of max factor on that. But that will never burn out the same wrinkles. Don't you never think that? God looks right through it. And so Jezebel knew how to put it on to make it look nice. And so when Ahab, this young Jewish boy, became king, she put the manicure on her eyes, or whatever you call it, you know, and she flapped them back and forth. And Ahab's heart went tumbling because he didn't have God in there to teach him better. That's right. So my, what a thing that was. Now when she began to flirt with Ahab, Ahab married her. He thought, that's just the one for me. And Amenia man's made a mistake like that. Amenia man's done it. You have to see her on watch team, or when she really, she gets cleaned up, really, might change your mind altogether. Women shouldn't be married by looks anyhow, but by character. Let me tell you, boy, if you marry her, and she's all painted up one of these days, she'll fade. You know, if she's pretty, that'll fail one of these days, wait till she's, her first baby's born, and the teeth will go to coming out. A little later on, wrinkles will come over her eyes, and her hair get gray. You'll wake up one morning and wonder what you married, that's right. I mean that not for a joke. No, sir, that's true. I'm just laying a background here for something I want to say, see, that's right. But if you love her because there's something about her that you've prayed over, and God has joined you together, she can get old and wrinkled and be ugly. That won't make a bit of difference. You love her through eternity. What God has joined together, no man could put asunder. That's right. So ask God first. But Ahab, he goes down there and falls for this girl. So he comes up and marries her and brings her into Israel. And when she come up being a pagan, and did you notice Ahab went down there and showed that he was a borderline believer? He just went to the darling with the world to get this girl. And that's where many person made a mistake, stepping across the line. God has a boundary line. An old Methodist preacher, friend of mine, Brother Kelly, him and Sister Kelly used to sing a song. We let down the bars, we let down the bars, and to compromise with sin. We let down the bars, the ship got out, but how do the ghosts get in? You let down the bars. That's what was the matter. You compromise with sin. That's how the ghosts got in, because you let down the standard. Why old John Smith years ago, who was packed to the pulpit, could only preach two hours. He was so old. He only preached two hours. That's without a microphone. He said the very thought that's Methodism literary. He said the very idea that our Methodist daughters are wearing jewelry on their hands. What would he do now to see them in shorts? See, what would he think now at Methodist Baptist and Pentecostals? Just the same all the time. I'll only show you where it comes from. Where the background of it is, then you can see why I'm so angry with it. Not with you, with the things of the devil that's making you do that. Now, don't think it's cause I say this. If you go out and clean up, just because that I said that, then you're wrong. Yet, get down and pray and let God come into your heart and you'll clean up anyhow, I'm sure. Because long as that spirit got you in control, you'll fuss at me and fight back and say it's not so and all like this and you'll shake your head like a sheep with blind staggers but it won't do any good because if the holy spirit is in me you better get right by that stuff before you meet the judgments that's right mm -hmm. but don't let your pastor tell you anything different because it's thus in the lord in god's word that's right and so we find jezebel tearing her head which was cutting her hair rolling it up tearing her head, which is a disgrace. A woman that cuts her hair dishonors her husband. The Bible said so. A dishonorable woman should be divorced and put away. So that's a sign that she loves somebody else, according to the Bible, because she dishonors her husband when she does it. You know that's the Bible. How many knows that so? Raise up your hand. All that knows the Bible says that. Then what do you do it for? 
That's what I wonder. I wonder why you do it. Because your pastor probably never said any different. But we need some strict old-fashioned evangelistic teaching that will tear that thing to pieces. That's right. No wonder we can't have revival. God can send gifts and everything else to a city and do miracles and perform things. And the people said, no wonder they sin in the camp. We've got to clean that thing out and operate. That's exactly right. And have the church straightened up and running right. And then God will come in and go to doing signs and wonders among us. You know that's right. I don't say that to hurt you. I say that because I love you. And at the judgment bar, then I go to stand before every individual here and give an account that's off of my chest now. It's on you. So I pray and see that God, what God tells you. I believe if the Holy Spirit comes into you and you keep that same spirit, you'll keep on doing the same thing. But you just change your spirit to the Holy Spirit. Watch how quick you change things. You sure will now. And so then Jezebel, when she got in there, she stomped that little high heel shoe and she was wearing and she said, now Ahab, I'll run this business. That's wrong to begin with. The man's the head of the house. All but in the United States, the woman's the head of the house. They're here. This is a woman's country. The woman is a God of America. I predict that before the coming of the Lord, that a woman will be a great ruler in the United States because it's a woman's country. Started in Hollywood. That's how it ran right on out. And now you see a little old man coming on the street and a little Jezebel with a cigarette in her mouth puffing along like that. She say, well, she hollers skirt and it jumps through to the door. That's right. And at night time, she's setting out there with them pretty red fingernails. It looks like eagle's claws had been eating raw beef steak with it. Standing out there, she won't wash the dishes because she's afraid the paint will come off. Her poor husband describing the dishes after washing like that and her sitting in there sucking a cigarette and she's taking care of the baby, right? That's wrong, isn't it? Sounds ridiculous. But it's a Bible and the truth. That's exactly right. How could you ever eat a pound of biscuits with a woman that made them with that long fingernails? I couldn't. I tell you, it'll turn my stomach. I just couldn't do it. So anyhow, but oh my, it's all right. But you little little man, I'm ashamed of you, Christian brothers. Let your wife do such a thing as that. It shows what you're made out of. That's right. Now, women, you ought to say amen. After fasting at you like that, because he's a ruler. That's right. And the way he let you live, it's his fault. God's going to hold him responsible for it. That's right. If you ain't man enough to take up and put your own house in order, God be merciful to you. That's right. Because the Bible said in the very beginning that he shall rule over thee. Now, she's not a dormant now. She's a sweetheart, saying, But you should sit down and talk to her and reason it with her and tell her and read the Bible and pray together. These things wouldn't be in the church. Then if you've done that, that's right. So Jezebel, when she comes over, her little husband one day got kind of upset because that a man wouldn't break the tradition of God and the laws of God to let him have his place because the law said that he should keep his heritage and it be handed down Naboth. But then when he find out that he wouldn't do it, Ahab began to pine and rushing and fell across the bed and little Jezebel, the little butterfly, come and got him up in her lap and said, Now, dear, what's wrong with you? Said, Oh, Naboth wouldn't let me have his vineyard. She said, Don't worry, I'll get it for you. Who's the ruler of this kingdom anyhow? See, that puts me like in this mind of a denominational barrier. See, I'll get it for you. You just let me have my way. I'll get it. And she stomped her little foot and ran out there and got some more guys that was kind of backsliders and went over and set up a false accusation against Naboth and had him stoned and killed. But remember, when such sin as that goes on among the people, God's got somebody that will stand out and tell them about it. Amen. Yes, sir. He had a tissue plate by the name of Elijah. Walked right out there and told them people that was wrong. He said, God will make you answer for that kind of stuff, right? No matter how bad it gets, somewhere God's going to have a witness to speak against it. That's all. Somewhere he will be able these stones to his children to Abraham. How will he do it in some way, somewhere? 
by somebody. And there all the prophets, oh my Jezebel, might turn on them. And they just took water and went on. But old Elijah stood out there and he told them right exactly, said, God will make you pay for it. And you are against God. And really told them what was right and wrong. And she hated him. My, did you hate them? Sure. And you go to telling truth to people. Many times they'll hate you instead of repenting. That's right. You ought to be repenting and thanking God to know what's truth. That's right. But oh, she hated that prophet. My. So he goes up there and she is a false accusation set up against Neboth and had him stoned to death. And the man died out there in the street. And then he, she thought, oh, nobody will ever know nothing about that. That's all right. I sent two of my ambassadors up there and stood in the stand and accused him of being a traitor to God and to the king when the man was perfectly innocent. And they stoned him. She thought that would be all right. But just as sure as you know that sin and wickedness lies at your door, there's a God of heaven who knows all things. Remember that. He does. He knows all things. And then when he did that, he spoke to Elijah and said, Go down there and meet Ahab and tell him, Thus saith the Lord. Amen. I love that. Oh my, when sin does abound, grace does much more abound. That's right. That he had somebody down there who would go skin him down for him. So he met Ahab coming on the road and Ahab was going up there to take possession. And he had that. They had killed the man. The man killed because that he was absolutely doing exactly what God told him to do. That inheritance was to fall from generation to generation. And if he lost it at any way, it had to be redeemed by kinsman. Read the book of Ruth and the kinsman laws and see if that isn't right. So she had him killed for his voice. And they have come supposedly to have known better. The word was before him and the prophet was before him. And instead of that, so learned crazy to have a beautiful garden next to his palace. So he goes up there and takes it over by force. And Elijah met him on the road and told him, said, because that you have did this, you murderer, said, the dogs that licked Neho's blood is going to lick your blood in the same place. Brother, I mean, when God gets enough of anything, he gets enough of it. He said, besides that, that Jezebel that you married, oh my, he didn't care to talk about his wife and said, that Jezebel that you married, the dogs will even eat her in the streets in Jezreel and the dung will be over her, the ground that they can't even see here like Jezebel. Oh, my woman, you wouldn't want to be like that, would you? Not even remembrance left of her anywhere. Said that, and you can remember when you see all that going on like that, the only one in the Bible that did that, God fed that to the dogs, that's right. That's when you see a woman doing that, you, you see that some dog meat then. You see, because that's what God did. He fed it to the dogs. He fed them kind of women to the dogs. So you keep away from that. Clean up, amen. Get right with God. What we need is an old-fashioned scouring out, digging out. Get those weeds out of the patch so the corn can grow. Jesus is coming, all right? That's what we need. Back to the old healing line again. Back to the way God will come among us. But as long as you got the world mixed in, God won't move. You wonder sometimes why that things are going the way they are. You just look around a little while. Pray a little bit and God will condemn sin. Notice. And then the first thing you know, the things got worse. And Elijah set up in the mountains, up there alone. God told him, said, go down there. He showed him a vision, said, I just got enough of this. He said, go down there and tell it happen. That I will not let the rain or even the dew come until you call for it. The man of God will always follow the true word of God. Now Jezebel had threatened him. And everything else, well, you see, now by the banner, wait a minute. Before you leave Jezebel, the little woman may not have had a chance. She was born a pagan. She didn't have a chance. Oh, yes, she did too. She had a pastor, Pastor Elisha. Elisha wasn't afraid to tell her about it. Don't think God always puts the light there. She just refused to walk in the light. That was all, right? Oh, she didn't want to call Elijah her pastor, certainly not. 
she was other formal dignified men for pastor but god sent elijah to be her pastor no matter how much she hated him she hated him because the jewish religion was too straight for her and that's what's the matter today the people want to act like the world and talk like the world and dress like the world and make the church and the world all the same the christians holy ghost religion is too straight for them that's the only thing amen and the reason you want to call them holy rollers and say they haven't got the right mind and things is too straight for you to live. That's what's the matter. And some of the people that used to be that way is turned aside. What am I saying? My maybe that's good. But it's like a little man I used to give me castor oil. And she said, I just gag to think of it. She said, if you don't make you sick, it don't do you any good. Well, maybe that's the same thing here. It gets you right sick of yourself. Maybe it will fix your spiritual gastronomics. So you can really take the word. The one that Elijah went down, stomped up into the palace and right up past the guards and things. And he told Ahab, with his finger in his face said they are not even be due come from the heavens till i call for it oh my why god has spoke to him he was with the word of god so he wasn't as scared don't never be afraid Micaiah. wasn't afraid with the word of god no man's afraid when he got the word of god and the vision of god moving with the word the reason Micaiah could condemn against them prophets and tell them they were wrong and they had the devil spirit in them because there was fashions and everything that they were doing and cause they were not lined up with the word and god gives a true vision to the prophet and he trying to line them up and now and today the true vision is the baptism of the holy spirit the true prophet is a baptism it's the holy spirit himself he is the one that comes and lines us with the word and notice not some bishops or archbishop, but the Holy Spirit leads the church. Amen. Now watch. Now you find out that could you imagine Ahab standing there and looking at him, the king, and this old fellow. Maybe look like a fuzzy worm with all of his beard and hair sticking out like that and a piece of shape came around him. The Bible said he was hairy all over anyhow. I'd imagine it was a pretty looking sight standing there in a king's court but shaking his finger at his face and said the dew will not even fall from heaven till i call for it amen he had thus said the lord stopped right back out into the wilderness after he got by i can hear ahab holler ha 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 and that old quack came in here and said a thing like that did you ever hear such ha ha why we got the clergyman set here and we know all these things why there's nothing wrong here is just an old fashioned, an old foggy, but he had thus said the Lord. Yes, sir, and he stomped right back out the wilderness. Some of them said, Watch the way he goes. I will don't pay attention to it. And he went up by the brook Cherith and sat down up there. And the Lord told him, said, Go up there, for I'm going to take care of you while you are up there. I like that. You mind the Lord, and the Lord will take care of you. You just do what thus say the Lord is, and he will take care of you. And Elijah goes up there and sat down, just as confident that the rain wasn't going to fall as he could be. And the first thing you know, come a drought, and all the springs dried up, and they thought he was crazy. And there they was, he was an old foggy. He was an old-fashioned, everything like that, and an old cranky description. But he was God's pastor to the nation. In them days, Pastor Elijah the Tishbite. And so they wouldn't listen to him, but they said he was a little off. But he goes up and sits down by the spring, by the will of God, and there was people down here in the valley where all the hydrants was, and all the springs boiling up, starving to death for a drink of water. And there sat up Elijah up there drinking any time he wanted to, because he had thus said the Lord. And I wonder today, if you think you got a great big domination you belong to, or some great big church with a cross on top and a million dollar organ that you th can drink anytime you want to, I tell you the springs only open at thus said the Lord. There he stood up there getting a good 
whole spiritual drink anytime he wanted to. The water has dried up down here in the land. I think today a whole lot of the trouble that the water is dried up is in our lands too, our Christian land. What was the matter? You, how long ago you used to have old fashioned meetings where the people would cry, walk up and down the aisle and lay on their face all night and pray and bring your children in to the kingdom of God. And today they got to babysitters and they used to. It's a shame for women to smoke a cigarette. Today the whole company of people smoke cigarettes and it used to be a shame for women to paint and use all these things. And today it's just all one. You can't tell the Christian from the other. It's all the same. You know what's the matter? Your water lines have been cut off. That's what's the matter. We're in a desert. And that's the reason you got churches fasting all the time. You know that you take any kind of a plant and put it on the desert where there's no water. It gets stickers on it. And you take that same plant and put it where there's a lot of water. It gets soft. And why is it? It's because it's dry. And what's that's what's the matter with the churches today. They are fasting, glory to God, I'm a Baptist, hallelujah. I'm a Presbyterian, I'll tell you. We have the best selection of pastors, yes sir. We don't have to take your old Pentecostal theology. I tell you, I belong to the assemblies. That's who I am. We are as great as the rest of them. I belong to United. I belong to this, that, or the other. Oh, I see your stickers. Your water supply is gone. That's what's the matter. That's just what's the matter. The water has been cut off. You don't have the things like you used to have years ago. The miracles and things are not in the church. The feeling and the fellowship is not in the church like it used to be. What's the matter? The glory spring that led to your hallelujah garden was cut off. What did it? Sin. Sin getting in the church and getting in you is what did it because the weakness of the pulpit to keep the lines unstopped. That's right, amen. That's the truth. It might seem awful, crude, but it's the truth. And if you don't stop and call an old-fashioned prayer meeting and get back to God, what will you be in 10 years from now? Somebody better raise up and go to preaching this thing and getting this thing out of the church. It's a cancer and it's eating to the bone. Get it out to God, send evangelists who will stand on the word and preach a word when you see that thing going on and then let it go like that. Why? Here the day I met a bunch of women who was having a prayer meeting, shouting and speaking in tongues with shorts on, smoking cigarettes, Pentecostals. God of mercy, it's park Sweden. Sinners is exactly what it is. I'm not judged, but by their fruits, you shall know them. Do you realize it's insanity? Do you realize there's only one time in the Bible that anyone ever stripped their clothes off and that was a devil possessed person do you realize that all this stuff that's going on today these rock and roll parties that you are all attending up in them places when they go so frantic and get in such a maneuver the presley and them till the young ladies take their knees clothes off and throw them up on the platform for him to autograph and call that civilization when they send dozens of them to the incense Al Salem afterwards and the radio programs and nearly everything nearly you hear is full of that curse. It's a devil like a roaring lion and they're bringing that same thing with same boogie moogie and everything into the church. Way in the hot and of Africa, that's the same mournful sound. When I see them stand there and the witch doctors and they go and them sounds heathens with paint on their face and the young women would dance out there Till they had sex parties and everything else. And America, in it, has reached the top of salvation and swinging backwards and going into heathens again, painting and rocking and rolling thus, and even calling themselves church members. Amen. Many a time, they, were a, they had one here in Canada not long ago, and I think they sent 10 kids in two days after that to the insane institution. Sure, you better settle down to the old-fashioned gospel and come back to Christ. Certainly, they had. Draw the lines between right and wrong. Elijah sitting up there on the hill, and they said he was a crank. They said he didn't know what he was talking about. And here, there was down here with nothing to eat. The wheat crops didn't produce, didn't have no water. They didn't have nothing but knowing of a tongue. And they said that he was a crumb. And there he was setting up there a whole lot better off than many of you people are here in Chicago tonight. That's right. He was setting up there first.
in the will of God, setting by spring of water, with crows bringing him something to eat. He had porters that brought him something to eat. Every time he got hungry, here come a crow with a sandwich and give it to him. He did, sat down and drink, got up, praise the Lord. Now, if that isn't fine, I never told it. That's living in luxury to me. Will it be to you? Sure it was. And knowing that he was in the will of God, someone said to me one time, say, Brother Branham, do you actually believe those crows sought, brought meat and bread? I said, yes, sir. Said, how do you know they did? I said, the Bible said, so that's all. He said, well, listen, I want to ask you a question then. Where did you, they get it? I said, I'm going to tell you, I don't know. But I said, the only thing I know, they brought it. He ate it. And I said, just like the question you asked me a while ago, what makes me shout and carry on the way I do? It's the Holy Ghost. I tell you when it, where it comes from, but I know it gets here. And I just take it. That's the only thing I can do. And God sent it. And I love it, amen. So long as you're in the will of the Lord, what difference does it make? I don't care where it comes from, as long as the Lord sent it to me. That's good. Amen. I just receive it. I don't care what the world thinks of it. Go ahead and know your tongues and know your water dried up and know hallelujahs in the church and all condemnation setting around picking and painting fingernails while the preacher's bringing his little satisfied 10 cent stop message. Try to pat you on the back and everything then. That's right. Now, that's not Presbyterian. That's Pentecostal, right? Oh, that's rough, isn't it? But it's the truth. Yes, sir. What you ought to have is some more John the Baptist. An old message like that. A man filled with the Holy Ghost who walked up right in the face of sin and said, it's not lawful for you to have her. That's right. Amen. That's what the Bible says to do. Tear it out. The axe is laid to the root of the tree. That's right. Cut her down. That's what we need is circumcision. Circumcision means to cut off surplus flesh. That's what we need in the Pentecostal church tonight is some surplus flesh and the nonsense cut it out of it. That's exactly right. Back to the old hearing line. Elijah setting up there for three years just having a good time under the anointing of the Lord every day and every night. Every time a crow would come by, dig right down, get him a sandwich, he'd go eat it. Get up and praise the Lord, give him a drink of water and shout a little while and set back down again. If that isn't wonderful, and then they begin to find out, wonder what to become of that holy roller. Wonder why. He might have been right after all. So then they decided to hunt for him. So they hunted every nation trying to find him. But he was, they couldn't find him, certainly not. So the Lord said, Ahab, or to Elijah, I want you to go down and meet Ahab. So down the mountain he came and walked up. And when Ahab met him, he said, Oh, here you are. So this is you, huh? You're the one that troubles Israel. Oh my, you know what he said? He said, it isn't me, it's you. And your little Jezebel has done it. That's exactly right. You brought this witchcraft into Israel and done these things and you've done. And you're the one that's done this. And he said, that's what the people are today. They try to say, oh, they make too much noise and they do this and that. And that's the trouble of it. Listen, it's not the doctor. It's a disease that causes the trouble. That's right. It's a disease. It's the sin that cut off the blessing. That's a sin that's in, not because you haven't got good pastors, not because you haven't got fine churches, not because you haven't got this, that, or the other. Sure you have, but it's a sin that's cutting you away from these things that you ought to have. It's sin that's keeping the church from that structural condition all the time. It's sin, not the building, not the church, but the sin that's in the church. So then he said, pull them up. On Mount Carmel, here, and we'll find out who's God. Let the God that answers by fire be God. Let's prove and see who's God. Oh, I'm so happy to know that we still have the same God, that the God that is God still answers the like God, talks like God, walks like God, heals like God, saves like God, and cleans up like God. Amen. Still the same God. It's proved. God is visiting the people today. God is in his church trying to purge the thing, take out the leaven out of it, 
He's sending messengers, signs and wonders and miracles and everything, trying to prove that he loves them and he wants them to clean up. Get rid of this here. All this carrying on, staying home on Wednesday night from prayer meeting to look at this old silly stuff of that old woman from Hollywood, married four or five different times, and some guy that's run with half the women on the West Coast. And who loves Lucy's and all these things like that. And you Christian people stay home to see that and stay away from the house of God. It shows what kind of a spirit is in you. Amen. I've got it at home from the FBI files. Any minister can get them that wants to. If you only know the filth and things and then people that you make example, dress like them, act like them, talk like them, brother, read the Bible. Talk like a Christian, act like a Christian, be like a Christian, live like a Christian. What we need today, amen? Now, it ain't paint and scissors that cuts your hair that bothers you. It's a spirit in you that makes you go get it. And that's what it is. Max factor could make all of it you wanted to and late over there. And if you as a Christian, you never touch it. I mean, if you was baptized with the Holy Ghost and living where you ought to live, that's right, and your pastor preach the truth and then let you know about it, you wouldn't even care a bit. How could you sell your old button shoes down on the street today, them high list up shoes, which they got more leather in them than a pair of a dozen little things, and you pay $25 for a little strap across a toe and a big old painted toenail sticking out like that, and the hills flapping around to the rain, and you go down the street like that, that's right, that's right, but you couldn't sell that old-fashioned shoe because you don't want it. You done seen Martha Sijana out yonder where some other kind seen. You want to dress like her. You don't want that dress that hangs loose. You want that one that you poured into it because that you seen Susan television and on the radio and in the magazine. The devil putting all that stuff around you. Young kids drinking beer, Hot Health 92 and Schlitz and all this kind of stuff. It's that's a lie and nothing but that turns young men and women to batty eye dredges to drink that stuff. It's a devil. It fills the institution. It fills the prostitute houses. It does everything else. It breaks up homes. It causes rape and mud and everything else. And cigarettes poisons the mind, causes cancer. And the medical association even decent enough to put place it out and you continually smoke the devil's weed. I don't know what I'm saying it for. I don't sound like me, but I'm going to say it anyhow. As long as I'm coming out like that, just that's right, it's wrong. Get away from it. Christians get filled with God. Yes, sir. One day, when the final time comes for God to be answered, Elijah's prophecy to be fulfilled, the dogs licked the blood of Ahab right in the same place before they could wash a chariot in the pool of Samaria. When they went down to wash the chariot, when he was shot and killed, the dogs licked his blood. And when Jeshu, the son of Jehoshaphat, the righteous man with the right daddy behind him, it made a right man and a real king. Jehoshaphat was a man of God. See what he produced. See a Jehu. When he came riding down to there fiercely in the chariot, he cleaned up everything that was called sin. I mean, he cleaned house. We need some more Jehus today. That's right. Ride fiercely through the ranks and scatter the thing and call black, black and white, white. That's right. Right, right, and wrong, wrong. And when he come down through there, little Miss Jezebel, she thought, well, I'm a vamp anyhow, you know, said, I'm all pretty. And she goes over there and gets a makeup kit, you know, and she begins to fix her face up with all that makeup and stuff. And you know, and I've seen women do that in a restaurant and then take a piece of paper, a napkin, and bite on it like that, put me in the mind of my dog trying to bite a stick or something and on like that and look back again and make it around like that and then she fixed herself all up and she fixed her hair all manicured up just the way it's supposed to be you know and she thought she looked all pretty she uh come strutting out you know with that new type of a dress on she looked out the window she said did zimri have rest. Jehu was one of God that didn't go with him. He was the right kind of a pastor. He was a real evangelist. He said, Who's for me and who 
and got up there. And told the Hyunnachs had enough girl about them, enough, said we are. Said, throw her out the window, amen. Say, he got rough, didn't he? And when she hit the street, the blood splashed on the horses and up in the chariot. Said, let her lay there and drove on over her. He didn't know, even want. He was still in the will of God, for the word of God will work with the will of God always. Goes over, sets down, eats his dinner, said, well, that's pretty good clean up for today, said, you are to bury her while she's a king's daughter. And when she got there, he forgot that the word of God must be fulfilled. What was left, the palms of her hands and her skull, the dogs had eat her up. If you only know what, that has to be a strange thing, because dogs won't touch human blood, that's right. It was God pushed them to do it, that's right. I know that, I know that for truth. Yes, sir, they didn't touch human blood. And so then these dogs had eat her up because God had commanded them to do it. And there she was in that disgrace. The word of God prevail. It will always prevail, friend. I'm not hungry with you. I love you. I want you. I better keep away from evangelistic services because maybe I get too rough. I don't mean to be. I love you, but brother, sister, that's the truth. That's the truth, so help me. And I could say this. It's thus saith the Lord. For it is word that's right. Now, get that old cancer condition away from the church. Get out of it, women. Get out of it, men. Not only women too, but men too. And preacher also. You have let down the bar, pastor. There's nothing wrong with you. You haven't prayed enough through or you'd absolutely see a congregation getting in that condition. You'd stand and resist the thing if you preached to four walls. That's exactly, that's the truth. You would do it. And what we need is a old-fashioned scurrying out, cleaning up. And you Pentecostal people don't watch the Baptist and Presbyterian going to take a blessing and go on to glory with it. Famous Baptist ministers and Presbyterians and Lutherans are receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost, saying we are hungry for it, Brother Branham. We are hungry for it, and they are going on and on. Some of the outstanding men in the nation hungering for God. Oh, let's clean up. Let's all of us, the Lutheran, the Baptist, the Presbyterian, the Pentecostal, we are not divided. We are all one being church of the living God. Let's join our hands with one another and our hearts together. Look over towards Calvary and march on through the ranks let's go on to victory to victory jesus is coming soon friends and remember you people here try to be that called out group remember the bible said in the last days the last church age that will be a recent church age lukewarm and that's just where the pentecostal church has got to that's where they're all getting if you don't watch god's going to come down and pull a little remnant out here and here and here make up the bride and be gone see so let's be up now and believe god and have faith in god and believe that god is here and the god that was in elijah is the same god that's right here tonight he is the same god that was you might not want to receive it but it's god just the same he is and he does miracles he shows visions he sends powers he heals the sick he has revelations he just everything just exactly what god has always done how can we then friends in the light of this bible ever sit still and still live the same way here's the only thing you do now when you leave the church tonight you say you know i kind of believe by the brand i'm right yeah now that is the truth but tomorrow you go right back into the office when you ought to go, it's your husband's sick, you need to do it. But if it isn't, listen, sister dear, God made you for one place, the kitchen. When you get out of there, you ought to do his will. Remember that woman was made to be a helpmate at the house. She never was made for office work. And it's caused more disgrace and divorces and things. And today, even your lovely city is degraded as far as ours is with women cops on the street. If that ain't a disgrace to Chicago or anything else, when thousands of men walk in the streets wanting a job, exactly the truth, and big, oh my, hey, get over there. You ought to be in the kitchen cooking your husband a pie for supper or something. Exactly right. I know you are, that's hard, friends, but that's 
said not with scorn it said with love that i love you and i want you to understand it in that way but you can't see sin and sit still that's all i don't like it and i see it in the people and the people here and the people i preach to are people who love me and my living comes from them people god puts it upon the heart and they give me a living but will I stand in the judgment bar and God looks down at me in the presence of that great light of God in William Branham? You know better than that, and you let them headlong plunge into it. I'll require the blood at your hand. God forbid, no, no, no. I say it, my dear brother, sister, preach it. If God gives me breath as long as I live, then when that day you, I want him to say, it was well done, my good and faithful servant, now that's what I want him to say. And I want him to say, Oh, you happy people now. Aren't you glad that you circumcised from the things of the world? It was like I was preaching the other night on the shorn sheep. You are sheep. And the reason is the spirit has left the church is because the spirit only stays on sheep. And you see now, Brother Branham, now you talk about the women and us, men doing these things, that's, if I want to take a little drink by the Branham after I come home from work, that's my American privilege, that's right. If I want to smoke a good cigar, that's none of your business, that's my privilege, that's right. But if you're a sheep, you're willing to give up and be shown of your own rights, your own privileges, a sheep is willing to lay down and let them take off of him what come on him. Is that right? You see, if I want to wear a dress and a skirt and I want to do this the way i want to do it that's my business that's my american privilege the american public puts it out and there it's legal they won't run me off the street with it and if i want to do it i'll do it that's my privilege that's right madam that's exactly right but if you're a lamb you're ready to forfeit your rights to be a lamb of god that's right if you're a lamb you'll forfeit your rights that's true so you ought to do that and if you just go out and don't try. You say, well, I'm going to quit it. Pray till God just makes it so real to you, you'll quit yourself. If you'll just do that. And now we're here to help you, not to hurt you, but to be a blessing to you. And I pray that you'll take this little old cut up evangelistic message tonight to your hearts and go home and pray over it and say, God, be merciful to me. How many believe that it's the truth and say, I accept it as a truth. Raise your hand. God bless you. Fine. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, in the light of the blessed Holy Word, yet with this pouring into my spirit and holding back for his prayer line that's coming up, I pray God that you'll help now. And may I, that which I was going to say, press on into the heart anyhow. Grant it, Lord, and let it be received in the spirit of love, not in rebuke, but in the spirit of love, seeing this great cancer of sin moving in on these blessed children of yours, and how the pastors sit silent and don't say nothing about it. Oh, God, raise up men that will stand out. Grant it, Lord. Send some more tissue bites. Elijah alone, that should really stand regardless. Grant it, Father, and that preach that they can see the light. Oh, yes. Jezebel had the light, plenty of it. She had Mount Carmel light to see that God answered prayer and performed miracles. She knew it, but she wasn't willing to sacrifice and to walk in the light. And I pray, Father, that you'll bless each one here tonight and get glory and heal the sick now and let it be known that the God of Elijah still lives tonight, that he's still the same God and I'll ask this in Jesus' name. And while we have our heads bowed, I wonder tonight, I want everyone praying, I wonder tonight in the little talk that we just had as a little family talk together. My part of the service closing tomorrow night. I wonder if you would say, Brother Branham, buy this. Not Brother Branham, Lord, God, I'm guilty of these things, but I'm ashamed of myself. I have been going to church and calling myself a Christian. I've been taking a drink, a little drink. I've been smoking a little. I tell you some foul jokes. And with the crowd, and I take a drink to be sociable. But I'm ashamed of myself, Brother Branham. 
as a professing to be a servant of Christ, I realize it's a wrong spirit making me do that. And the woman say, I'm ashamed of myself, Father Branham. I did have my hair all cut off. And I know the Bible said for me not to do that. I know I spend a big part of my time in a beauty shop. You should look your best sister, that's right. Be clean and neat and lovely and sweet. I know your husband will appreciate you like that. That you look a lot better if you let your hair grow out. Women are supposed to have that. They ain't supposed to look like a man. Man's not supposed to have long hair. The Bible says, for him not. You see, I've used paint and makeup at Branham. I've used all kind of clothes. I know I've thrown myself there before. Man, listen, I said this. I want to say it again with the heads bowed. Sister, dear, you may be as pure as a lady to your husband. You may be just as pure and undefiled from those things. But did you know at the judgment you may be called on as committing adultery? You know, Jesus said, whosoever looketh upon a woman to last after her has committed adultery with her already in his heart. Well, what if you dress yourself that way and you go out on the street and a sinner man looks at you and lasts after you, then he's going to have to answer for adultery at the judgment and you're going to be the one that's guilty and you'll have to answer for adultery in the presence of God and no adulteress will ever enter heaven. You presented yourself before him to look that way. You see what I mean? Bless your heart. I don't want you to be all disappointed at judgment. I want you to go. You might be pure and clean as you can be. You may be just as the loveliest type of woman. But if you dress yourself like that, and man lasts for you, and you presented yourself to men like that, and they do, you will answer the day of the judgment as an adulterer. That's exactly right. The Bible said so. See, this was deep. For years I passed through this country of America, my homeland, and I told you all a few years ago, I went through this land praying for the sick, and with signs and wonders I said, one of these days I'm coming back. I'm coming with the gospel truth. That's right. If I can win the love of the people, then I want to tell them that was truth. That's what I'm doing. Are you guilty? No one raising your head now. Everybody in prayer. Will you raise your hand to Christ and say, by your help, God, cleanse my heart tonight and let me be a different person, both man and woman? Will you raise your hands to God, to Christ right now? God bless you. That's fine. Everywhere, by your help, Christ, from this night on, I want to pray till you make me a different spirit that will make me look different and act different. I don't want to act like the world, be separate from the world. Come out from among the unclean, then circumcise the touch, not the unclean things, their old sexy clothes, and they're smoking and they're drinking and they're gambling and their dirty jokes don't associate with it. God, you think that gentle and dove of God would ever stay in a place like that where all the dirty old things are going on? No, friend, no, no. It will depart in immediate. So if You've got that in you. Get rid of it tonight, will you? Now, there's been at least 30, 40 hands up. I want to pray for you. Now, dear God, if I should go home to glory tonight, as I trust that I will someday, I hope that you keep me here as a long time to finish with me. I believe in that you will. But I feel that I have told the truth in the light of the gospel. And I pray God that it received right now. And this hand that went up, they were convinced that they've been wrong. They're sincere, Lord. They are. We don't want them to feel hurt. We want them to be feel blessed. And we want them now, if it be a divine will, which I know it is, to put a new spirit in them. They don't want to act like that. Men don't want to drink and carry on and tell those smarty jokes and women don't want to paint their faces and act like heathens and be marked by a trade of heathenism. God, we pray that you will help them tonight and bless them all. And now that thou and save all the sinners, Lord, call the backsliders back to the place again of the blessings of God. Take out all the old clogs and the stuff that's clogging up the line from the irrigation that runs to the garden, hallelujah, where the flowers eternal grow and the blessed perfume of God's holy presence is with them all over the day. God grant 
the water supply is cut off because sin has done it. God, remove all sin tonight and water that garden again with your blessings and your blood. Lord, that it will, the sin will be taken away. And now, Lord, that the people would know that you're still the same, Lord Jesus, and that I be a servant. I pray now, after this hard, crude talking, I pray that you'll anoint me just now, Lord, with the Spirit, the Holy Spirit that will speak things and heal the sick, to let you, to let the people know that you love them, and it's your message, and you want them to be well and prosper and do good things. Grant it, Father, I pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. I'll never forsake him. I'll never forsake him. I'll never forsake him because he first loved me. You mean it? Does the word make you feel like you're scored out? It does to me, just to hearing the word, just cleanses me out, just makes me a new person. Does it uh, you the that way, Billy? Did you give out prayer cards? N1 to 100. All right, N1 to 100. Let's call some of them then. You tell it. Don't you tell that. I said, there's a trouble. I've confessed that to God. I said, it wasn't God you sinned against, it was your husband. Go make it right with him. And when finally she did it, she got healed. Then she came back. I said, now Satan will have to live. See, because as long as there's sin in your life, Satan can hold a stick over you. That's exactly right. Whether it's something that you have done or something you ought to have done, be just the same thing. So let's see, how many did I call down there? I don't think I got very many. Where was I calling from? From 1 to what? Oh, from 7 to 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And get so. We'll pray for these here while we are now. The rest of us bow our heads now. Heavenly Father, now that we pray that your holy hands will be laid upon these handkerchiefs and parcels here, and may we be healed, everyone that they represent. Grant it, Lord, may we when we get there to that poor old mother laying in the hospital room, that it will be, be maybe with convulsions or whatever it may be. Thou knowest, Lord, and I pray that the evil spirits will go from them. Grant it, and they be made well through just name. Amen. All right. Are you still all them lined up? Is that? All right. Then we'd start the prayer line. If they're not lined up, now, I want everyone to please, for the next few moments, if you can, this is going to be a change, over to stand now, like that, and then start praying for the sick. I will, if you'll just keep your seats, just for a few moments, and just believe. And then if you're sick, and you have a need of God, if you'll just look this way, and pray, and say in your heart, say this, say, Lord God, I'm in need of you. Maybe, I'm a little skeptic, you, Brother Branham, doesn't know me, I'm sure. You just have him to turn around and say to me what this is that's causing me to do this way or something that I know. That's the truth. And all my doubts will fade from me and I'll never disbelieve no more. Now that's quite a thing to say. But brother and sister, in Christ's name, you do that and see if he doesn't call you. See. Now, sometimes it's a little conglomeration. I can't get it all, but I've explained that, what that is. Now, here's a lady here. I suppose that she's a stranger to me. Are you a lady? We do not know each other. I never met, I guess, in life. But, ma'am, you saw me one time. Whereabouts in Vandalia, Illinois, you saw me. All right. But, of course, that's been about 10 years ago when I first got started. And you just among that big crowd there in that tent, oh my, 
there was quite a crowd, wasn't it? Was you there that night? The blind boy that had no eyes got healed. He came over and picked up the, my tie and said, "What color is this?" Right along towards the last of the meeting, and it's been about ten years ago. There's a shuka blair. They're also in Vandalia. I believe at blind eyes that got healed in the meeting. One night the Lord broke through and just flooded the place and they all picked up cots and stretchers and the papers packed it in Chicago. Paper called the brother Henry Braham. I believe never will forget that the Tribune here in Chicago had two or three pages of it in the meeting. Had been a long time since then. Lots of waters went down the river, but God still remains the same. Now this lady is, she doesn't know me. She said she's seen me in a meeting one time. What, 10 years ago then if there's anything you're here for i don't know it you know that i have no way of knowing that only god would have to reveal it is that right well now if jesus is talking to the women at the well stood and talk like we're talking now and then finally found where trouble was and told her she believed that it was the messiah she believed she said will samaritans know the Messiah will do this when he comes. But she couldn't understand who he was. And he told her that he was a Messiah. How marvelous. How wonderful. Well, my, he's still the Messiah tonight. Now, to the audience, Moses, when he went down and turned his hand to leprosy and healed it, and showed the people that God had sent him, that settled it with all Israel. They just went on, followed him. Is that right? But if God tonight, if you desire to question the woman, okay, God tonight knows of this woman. I know nothing of her, never seen her in my life to know of. Of course, we're standing up like the people, she could see me, but I know her not. There she is, she's probably one of your friends here, and you all know all about it. But now, if God can tell me what the woman is here for, what her trouble is, it might be domestic trouble, it might be sickness, it might be for somebody else, I don't know. I can't tell you, but if he will reveal that, we'll have to know that it's some kind of a spiritual unseen power doing it. Is that right? Well, now the Bible said that when Jesus was here on earth, that's the very thing he did and didn't do nothing till first the Father showed him. Is that the scripture? And he said, This thing that I do shall you also, I'll be with you to the end of the world now. If he can reproduce his life in our body tonight by cleansing us with his own blood, which we are unworthy, but make us worthy through his blood, then it ought to satisfy everyone that Jesus Christ is risen the dead and he's right here with you. Is that right now? May he grant it? He might not. I couldn't tell you. He may, but he, may he grant it. Now I want to talk to you. I've been preaching and waiting. Of course, I'm waiting for a changing for the Holy Spirit, for the anointing of the Holy Spirit, for the healing service. But now, just to speak with you for a moment, and I, if God reveals it now, you're going to accept it, whatever it is, you're going to accept it. Now to the audience, I'm just looking at a young woman standing here, not younger than I, and she's looking at me, and looks to me like a Christian to look at her, and she, I don't, couldn't see, only just to, I look at her and think she looks like a Christian. And, but God knows all things, right? But now, if God can, or will, don't say he can, if he will reveal to me what's your trouble, then that settles the whole question. It's all over. That's right. Isn't that wonderful to know that the God of Elijah still lives? See? He does. That's right. You are a Christian. All right. Because of that real Christian welcoming, begin to come since the angel of the Lord and your conscience, that something's going on now. Now, just as a Christian, a Christian sister and a Christian brother, now, just since a second ago, something taken place, wasn't it? You could feel something. If that's right, raise up your hand. That's right, see? Because uh, right between me and you, now the anointing begins to start. There's a light standing between me and you. Did you ever see the picture of it? You never seen it? I think they have it here. It's right between you and I now. Your trouble's in your leg. That's true, isn't it? And in the bone, and it's a tumor, and it's malignant. You're in a serious condition, and a black shadow hangs near you 
which is death the shroom you are familiar now is but not vandalia place like a hill dover hill something like that illinois is that says tower hill yes that's right your name is wa lydia m wa is that right you believe me now to be his servant then come here a heavenly father in the name in the bible when that was here on earth you walked among men and wielded yourself to the father of heaven and he was in you and showed you things to do and to speak and you said you didn't do nothing unless you showed you first and then as the father sent you you said you'd sent us to go with us and be with us and the things that you done will be continued your ministry by your church until you come again and we are looking for you to come the second time in glory and tonight the very audience the initial evidence of the living god is here on the platform tonight among the people in chicago and the signs that he said to be done to the end of the world is now being done and this devil has been on a sister to take her life may be cast in christ's name and come from the woman and we shall live amen god bless you lady now who have been rejoicing amen do you believe now now look i've been preaching for about two hours all right that one vision and look at the beads of sweat see it just weapons you something goes from you the thing left lady see the woman touched his garment and said something went from me not from all right bring the man now please be reverent if you will remember evil spirit come out of one and go into others how many knows that to be true so be reverent sir god must help you because you are aware it's cancer and your condition in the bowels there and when you sit down and have to use a cushion to sit on but only god can help you do you believe if i ask him that he will help you and all this host of people here tonight christian believer you believe will you praise him and give him all the glory you love him all of your heart and will serve him will you do it you will may the lord grant your blessing heavenly father has looked into the face of this man knowing that he says tonight like the lepers you sat at the gate of samaria when the syrians had besieged it there was lepers he said why do we sit here to we die if we sit here we'll surely die if you go in the city there's nothing can be done for us and they took a chance by going to the host of the enemy and you rewarded their faith and saved their lives god this man the doctor can do no more and there's nothing left for him to do but to come to you and you are not an enemy you are a loving father who is expecting him tonight to come and now he's come and i lay hands upon him as your servant and ask that in jesus christ's name that you will heal the man and let him live and maybe in the return to chicago sometime he will come and give him praise and glory to you for his healing amen god bless you brother now go don't doubt nothing just go on like you that nothing ever happened to you now be reverent just be reverent as you can be and have faith in god only the lord just can make the sick well i'm the lord who heals all of the diseases is that true the bible says that it is a truth and we know if the bible says so it is true now here's a lady sitting standing here rather before me a stranger to me it that is true isn't it lady i don't know you but jesus does know you now if i had someone helping you and i wouldn't do it wouldn't i be a terrible man now at the judgment bar what would god say to me if he'd say i told you to go help a woman and you didn't do it i'd have to answer for it but i have no way of helping you only that something might raise your faith in god is that right and your healing has already been completed when jesus died for you you just got to have faith to receive it isn't that right now if god will reveal to me what you're here for will you accept it and believe it you will but the audience do the same all right sister you look this away just a moment i just want to talk to you the first thing i see the blood dripping before you is got sugar in it which is diabetes and you got sugar diabetes that's right insulin a wonderful thing but the blood of jesus is better isn't that right see i see you're upset about something too 
something in your heart that's been uh, you're praying about is your husband and say he's a patient in hospital that's right a state hospital and you're wanting if you're praying about it's his soul that's right it's his soul that you believe is saved and you want to pray for him i'm not reading your mind but it's that's true isn't it now there's not a shadow of doubt in your mind now is there a heavenly father in the name of jesus the son of god i pray that you'll grant this and give her her deliverance and her husband in christ's name amen look down at the hospital at the church mrs hill you can go ahead then amen that's right and you didn't eat i see the church with the name that's the reason i said that you see all right would you come have faith in god don't doubt but believe you believe that the lord jesus lives and reigns you believe that he's the same yesterday today and forever are you a minister's wife it's not on your ticket but i thought i seen some modern platform or someone preaching or something it was your husband because i don't think you as a lady you are would let a, someone else put their arm around you as he did that's right because you are a real lady admire you you believe the lord jesus can heal you make you well you got someone else that want prayed for two haven't you child he's got sinus trouble hasn't it hay fever like that's true a little girl i'd say about 10 or 12 years old that is right isn't it it's your daughter you are not from illinois you're from a state that's kind of plain long plains from a place called Paga, kansas is where you come from that's right do you believe it as his prophet and you put the handkerchief that you wiped the tears from your eyes on your child everything will be all right come here heavenly father i bless this woman in the name of the lord jesus christ that you will heal her and make her well for jesus sake amen now mrs Doak, you go home to kansas and be well oh jesus christ is risen the dead he's real and he's wonderful how do you do sister i want to ask you something you are sitting right down here just for a few minutes ago that's right you're looking up here at me and all of a sudden all i was speaking just seemed like it was just thrilled about something at once wasn't it i could tell you it was a vision from over you then okay that little sister that won't hurt you you know that don't you you know that won't hurt you and your worries worries that you got on your heart it won't hurt you but you must remember that god heals do you believe your dad would be right you do god can heal that cancer if you believe it if you believe it do you believe it say your mother has had trouble too she had a stroke recently isn't that right now do you believe that you're standing in his presence do you accept everything that jesus died for would it be yours tonight would you come heavenly father bless this dear woman as she stands here in and i pray that in christ's name that you'll heal her and heal the loved ones that she's asked for in Jesus christ's name amen now you take those and lay them on both amen god bless you let's say praise the lord conscious says praise the lord oh some of troubles are for bad and causes you you know but god's a healer of you do you believe that you want to go eat would you think that god would make you well you do all right just keep eating on and praising god and going doing the will of the lord amen back trouble too sister but god can make you well don't you believe that sure just keep going by then and i believe he's done it amen now i want to ask you something when i said stomach trouble to that lady a real funny feeling swept over you now you go eat too that answer left you amen glory to the lord jesus christ all praise of powers in the heavens and earth is given to his hand what do you think about it in the audience god is real isn't he do you believe that he can heal do you believe he can make well he can do anything that he desires to do do you believe that amen oh i just love him there's something in my heart just bubbling over how i love the lord jesus i want to ask you if you believe with all your heart right now and you'll see the glory of god how many out there now that raised your hand a while ago without your cards i want you to go to pray i want you to pray that god will just send down the holy ghost and what if i didn't say nothing to you and just prayed for you and told you 
is going to get well. Would you believe it? Then go right ahead. The Lord bless you. What about that throat? You believe God will heal it? You want to sing for the glory of God? You used to be a singer, don't you? And you want to sing for the glory of God? All right, you're going to. All right, just have faith in God. The young man sitting next to you there, he's just thrilled all over when I said that. He's got something wrong with his face. That's right, isn't it, young fellow? And you believe that just Christ make you well? And that gland trouble too, God can make that well. You believe it? The reason I said that is so you'd understand it's something else you've seen. That amen, all right. You believe God will do it, amen. What do you think about it? You nodded your head, the colored lady sitting there. Sitting there in the front row looking at me. Looked up this way and nodded. That's right. She said, aha, uh -huh. got something wrong with your head, haven't you? That's right. You believe me to be God's prophet? His servant, I mean to say, that stumbles the people when you say prophet. You believe it? There's something else that I can't see just exactly. There's something going on, but I can't tell just what it is. I seen two people. It's someone else. It's another lady. Yes, you're praying for another lady. Is your friend. She has a cancer, isn't she? That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He is from everlasting to everlasting. He is God. Little lady sitting in the front of that man that's praying so hard there, kind of heavy set. Has got a swollen glance setting right back there. Yes, ma'am. You are praying awful hard to be healed, aren't you? I want the man right behind you to lay hands over you. If he will, will you do that for me, brother? All right, Heavenly Father, bless that woman. She's trying to break through and seeing that mist of that light hanging over her. I feel that she'll grant her healing through Jesus Christ's name. And then you was healed while you were standing over here, honey. So just move on. Give God praise and glory. Amen. Let's say thank you, Lord. Congregation says thank you, Lord. Oh, he's wonderful. What do you think, lady? Setting right back there. You got some of trouble, haven't you? Got a little girl's got some of trouble too. Oh, that surprised you didn't eat, but you got healed then. Amen. You got another sort of a family. There's a peptic condition of the stomach that causes that. The little girls inherited it from you from your nervousness. That's right. Food sours and bulges and so forth. That is right. That's thus, say the Lord. There sits a lady next to you. She has these spells, kinda. And she isn't that, right, lady? Raise up your hand. That's right. You want to be healed? Well, the lady was sitting there that just was healed of some trouble. Lay your hand over on her sister. Father, in Christ's name, I pray that you confirm this. And I believe, and by God's Jesus Christ's name, through the power of the risen Christ, I cast away them spirits from them people in Jesus' name. Amen. It's wonderful. Do you need more evidence that he is risen from the dead? Do you believe he's here right now? What more would you want to disbelieve would be sin? What is sin and belief? Is that right? I want you to do something right now when I got strength left to do it. I'm going to trust this to you. I'm going to trust that you confess every sin that you know of right now. Confess it to God that it's wrong. And I'm going to try with all of my heart, with all of my strength, with all of that is within me. If I found favor with you, God, please have a prayer tonight as I pray sincerely. These people, Lord, I truly believe are sincere in their heart. They've been taught about from pillar to post and taught this, that, and all kinds of churches and creeds. Till Father, I feel sorry for them. And they're trying to be well. I pray thee, Lord Jesus, here tonight, will you please and answer prayer. And Father, I pray that you you'll let your spirit of God go forth now and do the exceeding abundantly here from heaven. God, the people's heart has been pulled through everything. What makes it so gross and dark is that they can't just realize and raise up at the time and know that you are here in the room. Not I, Lord, you are here. It's you that's doing this. And I pray that you'll give blessing to each one in just Christ's name. Now put your hands over on each other. Every person that's sick, raise up your hands. Someone lay your hand on somebody that's sick. And you come here to me, sir. Now put your hands over on someone. O love of God, how rich and pure, how measureless and strong, which shall forever 
My beloved friends, while you're in prayer, when your heads are bowed, while you're praying, one for the other, have you found the grace in your sight enough that you would believe me to be the servant of the Lord? Has the Lord confirmed his word back that I am with you 100% to help you? in the kingdom of God? Has God revealed that after all these seven or eight years that I went back and forth through Chicago? Is that it? so? Then hear me as God's servant. The Bible said to lay hands on each other, that they shall lay their hands on one another, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick. I believe in you. I believe you to be sincere in God's children. I believe with all my heart that God has called me to this work. And I believe you will ask with all my sincerity and You'll believe with all sincerity in this one great union of prayer as your hands and your heart are joined together in the fellowship of the resurrected Christ who is here in the building right now without any doubt at all in fallible signs showing that he's here. Can you realize now our hearts are to set in a meeting like this and hold your peace? Can you imagine how far away we have drifted and how little we have called the things of God to sit in a meeting like this and see these things going on and say nothing about it and just sit there like we were, just has grown there. Do you realize how far away from God we are by these things? Now let us open our hearts right now. Come open with our heart from place to place and say, Lord Jesus, beyond one shadow of doubt, I'm accepting you right now. Now, Satan. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out of the people. You are just an old doubter, and you're causing the people to doubt. But you've lost your hold. And the Holy Ghost is praying now, right now, to heal the sick. The power of God is here. And Satan will cast you away from these people in Jesus Christ's name. Come out from the people. You must turn and give it to everybody as a turn the service to brother.